Welcome to the Hilleberg Rogan, a wonderfully lightweight, airy and roomy tent for any trip in snow-free conditions. Available in both a two and three person version, the Rogan is an excellent all-around tent that provides the utmost comfort on a wide variety of warm weather trips, including backpacking, mountain scrambles, hunting, bike touring, and many more. And while it is a great choice for summer trips, it's also very much at home in the shoulder seasons, where both its impressive strength and light weight are welcome. We're using the three-person Rogan 3 in this video, but since setup for the two-person Rogan 2 is exactly the same, we refer to the tent throughout simply as the Rogan. This video covers everything you need to know about pitching your Rogan. We recommend that you watch this video carefully, look over the instruction booklet included with your Rogan, and that you practice pitching and using your tent before your first backcountry trip. Introduction to the Rogan. The Rogan is part of our Yellow Label series, our lightest weight tents which are made for use during the snow-free times of the year. These models are built with our lightest outer tent fabric, Carillon 1000, and they have full-time ventilation and airflow integrated into their construction, as befits their warmer weather use. They also have 9mm DAC Featherlight NSL poles, the same poles found in our all-season red label models, so they offer plenty of strength for handling any rough weather you might encounter. Like all Hilleberg tents, the Rogan has linked but separable inner and outer tents for either simultaneous pitching of both or separate use of each for the greatest versatility. The Rogan also has curved patterning on the bottom of its outer tent walls to provide its full-time ventilation as well as full mesh inner tent doors for constant airflow. The Rogan's two entrance and two vestibule configuration offers flexible entry and exit options and great storage space. And while the dome structure itself is self-supporting, you will need to peg out both of the vestibules. Included with the Rogan is the tent bag, the tent with attached guy lines and line runners, a pole bag, three poles, one spare pole section with a repair sleeve, a peg bag with 14 pegs, and an instruction booklet. Other accessories available for purchase include pole holders for pitching the inner tent separately, a footprint, a mesh inner tent, tarps and trekking poles, as well as extra pegs, guy line, line runners, and reflective cord. Pitching the Rogan. Remember that weather in the backcountry can change unexpectedly, so becoming comfortable in your pitching routine ahead of time means you will be prepared for any conditions you might encounter. When you pitch your tent, the process should feel smooth throughout, almost like second nature, and you should be consistent in these steps every time. Start by finding a level spot that is free of stones and other sharp objects. Arrange your tent so that its foot end faces into the direction of the wind. The Rogan's foot end has a smaller Hilleberg logo on its outer tent. It's a good idea to peg out one of the guy lines to keep the tent from flying away if the wind comes up suddenly. In this video, we're using the middle guy line that's on the bottom of the outer tent wall on the tent's foot end, and we recommend that you always use this line. You can pre-pack your tent to leave this guy line easily accessible, and we cover how to do this in detail in the Taking Down the Rogan section. Lay out the tent's three poles, making sure to secure your pole and peg bags as you use them. Note that two of the Rogan's poles are longer and of equal length. The shorter pole is for the roof of the tent. For maximum longevity and durability of your tent's poles, it's important that you're careful with them. Make sure that each segment is seated properly and that they don't drift apart while pitching the tent. A small gap can lead to pole breakage. Start by inserting one of the long poles approximately halfway into one of the pole sleeves. Grip the pole and pull the pole sleeve towards you until the pole end is fully seated in the closed end of the sleeve. While holding the pole sleeve, push the pole to arch it fully into the sleeve. Then place the free end into the pole holder cup and tighten the pole tensioner. Repeat this process with the other long pole. Again, make sure the pole holder cup is tightened completely. It should be flush with the bottom of the outer tent wall. 
To insert the short pole, partially unzip the outer tent entrance that is marked with a red tab on its guy line attachment. Insert the pole into the pole sleeve that is located behind the top of the zipper and is marked with red webbing. If you need more access, open the vestibule completely. When the pole is fully seated in the sleeve, it will not be visible. To adjust the pole tensioner, pull the tensioner webbing directly towards the inner tent. Next, peg down the tent's four corners. Insert the pegs at about a 45 degree angle to the ground and press them in. If necessary, use a rock to press or pound them in until only the top of the peg is barely visible. Avoid stepping on the pegs to press them into the ground as this can bend them. Make sure the peg tensioners are set to their longest setting and peg out the two vestibules. Tighten both peg tensioners so that the vestibules are taut. Make sure your guy lines are at their longest setting and peg them out as shown on the diagram. This configuration will provide your tent with the greatest stability. When tensioning the guy lines, don't tighten the line runners so much that they deform the poles. This can weaken the structure of the tent and can cause pole breakage. Guy lines work best when they are pegged at their longest setting, but you may need to shorten them because of terrain or pitching site constraints. Rather than using the line runners to shorten the guy line, attach the line to a peg at a shorter length by using a clove hitch or similar knot that is easy to remove. This way, you will still have full adjustability from the line runners. On both the head and foot ends of the Rogan, the middle guy line on the bottom of the outer tent wall can be used to enhance venting. These lines can also be set at a very short length to provide more protection from less than fine weather conditions like sideways rain. To do this, shorten the lines by using a clove hitch or similar knot to peg the guy lines closer to the base of the tent in such a way that you can still use the line runner to adjust the guy line itself. Once you've pegged the tent's perimeter and the guy lines, it's a good idea to double check that the pegs are in the ground completely and that the pole and peg tensioners and the guy lines are correctly adjusted. Your Rogan is now fully set up and ready for use. We recommend that you always peg all peg points and guy lines, which you might not necessarily need to do in fine weather, but it's a good habit to have and to practice. Using the Rogan. The Rogan has two vestibules, each with an entrance zipper between two door panels, one smaller and one larger. At the top of the zipper, the dedicated zipper garage helps protect the slider from dirt and keeps it in place when it's not in use. Each entrance zipper has a red toggle at its base that can be inserted into the zipper pole to lock the zipper in windy conditions. For even more security in high winds, you can then insert the red toggle through one of the metal rings at the base of the zipper. For maximum security, you can weave the toggle through the zipper pole and both metal rings. To do this, insert the toggle into the zipper pole, loosen the peg tensioner, align the rings and insert the toggle through both of them. Be sure to then readjust the tension after the toggle is completely inserted. Using the zipper lock system, you can lock the vestibule facing into the direction of the wind and use the other side to enter and exit the tent. You'll usually find it's most convenient to enter your tent through the larger of the door panels, and this is a default setting for the Rogan. Depending on the weather conditions, however, you might want to use a small panel instead. To do this, you will need to move both the lower end of the loop guy line and the peg tensioner assembly from the small panel to the larger one. First, untie the line runner knot on the lower guy line attachment point. Loop the line through the attachment point on the larger panel side of the zipper and retie the knot. Remember to re-tension the line after moving it. 
Next, loosen the peg tensioner assembly and move its toggle from the ring on the small panel to the one on the larger panel. Be sure to re-tighten it after moving it. Now you can fully unzip and use the small panel side of the entrance. No matter which door you use, when rolling the door itself, tuck the metal ring at the corner of the door into the fabric bundle and secure it with the elastic loop and toggle system. Rolling the door correctly is an easily overlooked step, but doing so takes only a few moments and will extend the lifespan of your tent zippers. Avoid letting the door panels drag on the ground and or stepping on them, as dirt and sand will shorten the lifespan of the zipper. In very good conditions, both of the vestibules can be unpegged and fully rolled away for maximum airflow and views. When rolling away both door panels, keep the peg tensioner assembly inside the bundle. To make resetting your tent easier, you can leave the pegs in the ground and simply re-hook the attachment points later. In rainy weather, you can unzip the door only about halfway when entering your Rogan. This helps keep rain off the inner tent. You can give yourself extra space to deal with wet gear in your vestibule by disconnecting a few of the toggles connecting the inner tent to the outer tent. Then push the now loose inner tent back. This way, you can create as much vestibule space as you need. To use the inner tent door, unzip it and roll it to the side and secure it with its elastic loop and toggle system. In the inner tent itself, two pockets at the head end give you plenty of space to keep your small items organized, and webbing loops in the ceiling allow you to easily string a clothesline for hanging items from. Avoid overloading the clothesline or the pockets as this can pull on the inner tent and decrease its performance. When you close your tent doors, it's a good idea to keep a finger in front of the zipper to prevent it from catching on the fabric. Using the Rogan outer tent separately. Using the outer tent on its own provides covered, dry space and plenty of room for more than just two or three people to gather. Simply detach the inner tent from the outer tent and pitch the outer tent as you would the complete tent. You can also pitch the complete tent and then detach the inner tent by starting at one of the inside corners and disconnecting the inner tent's toggles from the outer tent's rings. If you're planning to reattach the inner tent later, leaving one of the toggles in place and simply tucking the inner tent into the corner makes reattaching it easier. If you've taken the inner tent completely out, reattach it by aligning its one red toggle to the corresponding red ring near one of the outer tent doors. Then attach the remaining toggles as you back your way out of the tent. You can use the Rogan outer tent on its own as your primary shelter if you're trying to save weight. Combining it with the optional footprint will offer more comfort, but it's still not as comfortable as using it with the inner tent, since the outer tent by itself is not breathable and can therefore sometimes have condensation. We will cover how to attach the Rogan footprint in the Using the Rogan footprint section. Using the Rogan inner tent separately. Used on its own, the Rogan inner tent provides excellent lightweight, warm weather bug protection. The inner tent is water repellent but not waterproof, so use it on its own only in dry conditions and when you do not expect bad weather. For protection from rain or sun, you can pitch a tarp over your Rogan inner tent by using trekking poles, Hillary tarp poles, or by suspending it from trees. To pitch the inner tent on its own, you will need six pole holders, which are available for purchase separately, as well as the Rogan's three poles and four of its pegs. After detaching the inner tent, lay it out and begin attaching the pole holders. Starting at one of the corners, insert the tent's toggle through the pole holder's ring. Attach the remaining pole holders to the other three corners and to the toggles located directly above the two doors. Insert 
Insert one of the long poles by threading it through its line of elastic loops and the webbing loop at the top of the tent. Place the pole end into the pole holder at the end of the loops and leave the other end free. Repeat these steps for the other long pole, making sure to also slide it through the top webbing loop. Again, put the pole end into the pole holder at the end of the loops, but leave the other end free. Now arch one of the poles and place its end into its pole holder. Repeat with the other pole. Then insert the short pole through both elastic loops along the seam at the top of the tent. Place the pole end into the pole holder, then on the other side of the tent, fold away the last segment of the other end of the pole and place it into the remaining pole holder. This pole can be inserted either over top or underneath the long poles. Finally, peg the tent's four corners. Remember to press the pegs in completely at about a 45 degree angle to the ground. Your Rogan inner tent is now fully set up and ready for use. Using the optional Rogan Mesh Inner Tent Used on its own, the Rogan Mesh Inner Tent offers breezy, bug-free comfort and 360-degree views on warm weather trips in fine weather. It can also be used in place of the standard Rogan Inner Tent. Mesh Inner Tents weigh about the same as the corresponding model's standard Inner Tent. And while they provide maximum airiness, they offer less protection from the elements. To connect your mesh inner tent to your outer tent, first remove the standard inner tent. Align the mesh inner tent's one red toggle to the corresponding red ring near one of the outer tent doors, then attach the other toggles on the mesh inner tent to the appropriate rings on the outer tent. Since the Rogan mesh inner tent comes with six pole holders already attached, to pitch it you will need only the Rogan's three poles and four of its pegs. Pitching the Rogan Mesh Inner Tent on its own is identical to pitching the standard inner tent on its own. So for detailed instruction, refer back to the inner tent pitching section of this video. If you need quick weather protection, you can drape the outer tent over the top of your mesh inner tent or your standard inner tent as we're doing here. Simply spread the outer tent over the inner tent and align the big logo of the outer tent to the head end of the inner tent, that's the one with pockets. Either hook the outer tent corner loops over the pegs you used for the inner tent or peg the outer tent corners separately. Then peg out both of the vestibules. Using the Rogan footprint. Note that the Rogan's footprint only covers the area of the inner tent and not either of the vestibules. The best time to attach the footprint to your tent is before you go outdoors. Indoors, Lay your tent out with the floor side up. Position the footprint on top of the tent with its logo side facing down towards the floor. Align the logo on the footprint with the matching small logo on the foot end of the outer tent. Then simply attach the red toggles on the footprint's corners to the rings on the corners of the outer tent. You can leave the footprint on when you pack the tent. The Rogan's tent bag is sized so that it will accommodate the tent and the attached footprint. Taking down the Rogan. Make sure to brush any debris out of the inner tent and close all the doors before taking down and packing the tent away. When taking down the tent, repeat every step you used to pitch the tent, but in reverse. Start by unpegging the guy lines and perimeter of the tent. As you do this, make sure to set all the guy lines and peg tensioners to their longest lengths. That way, the tent will be fully ready for the next time you pitch it. On the foot end of the tent, we recommend that you leave the middle guy line that's on the bottom of the outer tent wall pegged out while you're taking down the tent. 
In very windy conditions, you might want to leave all three windward guy lines pegged to keep the tent more stable while you remove the poles. Next, loosen the short pole tensioner and expose the pole end, but don't remove the pole from the sleeve. Then completely loosen both pole tensioners for the long poles and remove the poles from the pole cups. Push down on the top crossing of the poles to flatten the tent out. Push each long pole out from the sleeve end while holding onto the pole sleeve itself. Never pull a pole out of the sleeve. It can cause the pole sections to separate inside the pole sleeve, making the pole difficult to remove. Finally, remove the short roof pole by pushing it out from the closed end of the pole sleeve. Check to see if the poles have been damaged as you fold them. If so, replace the damaged section as soon as possible with the repair pole section located in a pocket inside your pole bag. You should store all your pegs inside the peg bag and keep the peg bag inside the pole bag. This helps keep the pegs easily accessible for the next time you pitch your tent. There are two options for packing your Rogan into its bag, either folding and rolling it or stuffing it. With either method, make sure you pack the middle guy line that's on the bottom of the foot end's outer tent wall last, so it will be easily accessible for the next time you pitch your tent. If you decide to fold and roll your tent, we recommend that you fold it so that the floor is left facing outward. Keep the guy lines inside the fold, leaving that one foot end guy line out. Roll the pull bag inside the tent. Then unpeg the last guy line and store the last peg. Put the entire bundle into the tent bag and pack away the last guy line on top of everything else. That way, it will be ready to be used right away the next time you pitch your tent. Stuffing the tent is the most efficient method in stormy and windy conditions. Starting at one corner of the head end, gather and stuff the entire tent into the tent bag. Then unpeg the last guy line and store the last peg. Again, make sure to pack the glass guy line so it will be easily accessible for the next time you pitch your tent. If you choose to stuff your tent, you will need to stow the poles and pegs in your pack separately from the tent bag. Never stuff the poles into the tent bag. Doing this puts unnecessary strain on the tent fabric and can cause damage over time. If you carry your tent on the outside of your pack, such as under your pack's lid, it's a good idea to attach your tent bag's cord to your pack in case the tent slips out. At the end of your trip, there are a few steps you can take to extend the lifespan of your tent. You should never store a wet tent for a long period of time. As soon as possible, hang your tent up to dry. If you have the space, the ideal way is to put the poles in and hang the complete tent. If you have attached the optional footprint, make sure and detach one corner so both the tent floor and the footprint dry properly. If you have limited space, just make sure that it hangs long enough and that you rotate it so that it's completely dry between all the layers. Clean off and dry the pegs and inspect them for any damage, and brush out the zippers. Finally, pack away your Rogan in its tent bag and store it in a cool, dry place. Have a wonderful outing and enjoy the wilderness, but leave as small of an imprint as possible. Leave everything the way you would like to find it on your next trip. Visit Hilleberg.com to see our entire product range and to find more videos with practical tips on using your tent. You can also read more about us, including our history, our philosophy, and how we make our tents.